first, before I even get started with the speech, let me just say, uh, thank y'all for coming. All of y'all, I appreciate it. Also, we didn't see or hear from them, but the, the Miami Gardens Chiefs 9U football team, the Golden Army, they're sitting over here somewhere. You all stand up. They're behind those. You know, they are, they're a really good football team, but that's not actually why they're here tonight. They're here tonight because they're really good kids. They're really good kids and really good students. And, and so much of what we do is really just about them. Um, so I, I appreciate them being here tonight. Lee, uh, I appreciate you all bringing them. Nicole, uh, you can sit down. He, he just kept standing up. I love that. All right. Vice Mayor Harris. Councilman Igadaru, Councilman Williams, Councilwomen Otis, Odom, Davis, and Roberts, with special emphasis, and this isn't in the text, so no one knows I'm going to say it, to Davis and Roberts. You all, you're turned out now. You served as, as much time on the Miami Garden City Council as you can. I don't know how often you hear thank you. But thank you. Thank you. You all get them around. Yeah, no, it, it was eight years ago, and we said we was going to do some stuff. We said, we, I'm going to talk about it. We said we were going to do that. We said we were going to do that development over there. We said that we were going to change this. Thing. It's what we said we'd do. And we did it. And so often, I'll be the person standing on the stage. You know, I represent the city, it is my honor. But I understand that this doesn't move forward without us all. I appreciate your partnership, your service to this community, your service on the city council. I appreciate it. Thank you from me and thank you on behalf of 113,000 people. Give them another round of applause. <laughs> to our charter officers, Manager Cameron Benson. Cam, stand up for the folks. We call Cam Mr. Clean. I don't know why, because none of us have hair. But uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful city, city manager and, and partner in what we do. Our city attorney, the best city attorney probably in the entire state, Sonia Nightingale. Stand up, Sonia. She's also the flyer city attorney. Yeah. You know, we all look good, y'all. Um, our, our city clerk, he's new, so he's nervous, y'all. He's nervous, and all he got to do is stand up. Mario Bataille. Come on, stand up, Mario. To all of our residents, present or not, my love and admiration and thankfulness just to you for allowing a kid who grew up on 23rd Avenue to grow up to be the mayor of his hometown. Special greetings, of course, to my mother. Always wonderful to have you here. Yeah, give my mama, that's my mama, y'all. Always wonderful to have my younger sister here also, Karrion. Karrion, today is her birthday. Karrion, yeah, yeah, today, happy birthday. She doesn't expect this, but happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. I, I, I can't sing, but that's my baby sister, y'all. And, and then also to my 11-year-old heartbeat. Oliver G. Gilbert IV, little known, always also known as Little Oliver or Bubba. Y'all give a hand of yeah, give him a round of applause. He just asked, "What's for dinner?" I heard him say it. Um, amazing. Special recognition to our employees. Um, we're the elected officials. We're the city council. I'm the mayor. The city manager, the city attorney, the charter officers are here, they're department heads, but the people who clean the streets, the people who tend to the parks, the police officers that patrol the blocks and respond to danger, they're this city. They're this city and they are the people who you will blame when something goes wrong, right before you blame me or email me. And, and they're the people who actually do a lot of the hard work. And so I know people don't, you don't hear it, but thank you. I appreciate all of the employees of the city of Miami Gardens. We have among us many elected officials, most, most of whom have been recognized, 
but there is a particular group I'd like to draw your attention to. I have the pleasure of serving as the president of the African American Mayors Association. Now, AMA's membership is composed of hundreds of black mayors from across the country. We provide a critical voice of leadership on crucial issues that are critical to Americans, how we live our lives, how we grow our economy, how we become the America of our destiny. It is my honor to be their president and my pleasure to welcome them to welcome my leadership team to the city of Miami Gardens. You give the members of AMA a round of applause, you all. We have with us Mayor Karen Freeman Wilson from Gary, Indiana, the next president of the National League of Cities. Yeah, Mayor Hardy Davis from Augusta, Georgia, the second largest city in the, in the state of Georgia. And, and, and also, listen, that's the home of the Masters, y'all, and y'all know Tiger's back. <laughs> Mayor Diane Delaware, Mayor Dina Holliday, who is a Rattler mayor. She's a Rattler, y'all gonna always clap for fam you. Mayor William Johnson, who's the Secretary of Obama. Thank you for your leadership and your service, William. Mayor Jason Ward, Mayor McKinley Price from Newport News, Virginia, Mayor Vivian Covington, Mayor Wayne Messam, who is, of course, our neighbor and our friend, and Mayor Eugene Grant, along with Mayor Tamara James from Dania Beach. Those are the people who are, who, are, who are here, but there's so many more who work so tirelessly. From, from cities big and small, areas urban and rural we lead. We lead during times of celebration. We lead during times of despair. We lead with hearts of service. Thank you all for your leadership and service to the people of every race, gender, ethnicity, religion, and sexual orientation. Thank you for seeing the potential of cities and how the American dream, and how the American dream is best brought to effect in cities and how mayors are the tip of the sword for service and democracy. This evening we convene for the 15th time in the city's history to assess our progress, fortify our resolve, and affirm our path forward. It's been 373 days since last, through official pageantry and form, the state of this city was addressed. The city's 15 years old now. 15 years ago, Jeb Bush was governor. The, the number one movie was Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. And the number one song was in the club by 50 Cent. Y'all remember that song. With, with that as a backdrop, residents from surrounding neighborhoods gathered their might, organized their thoughts, brought to bear their resources, all in an effort to decentralize governance and formalize the togetherness of the place that would become Miami Gardens. 15 fruitful years later, I stand before you to report the progress is steadfast and that foundation is solid. Now, we've had a notable addition to the city of Miami Gardens family. Please help me in welcoming back Mario Bataille, our city clerk. Give him a round of applause. Now, Mario has an interesting story. And in some ways, his story is in testament to what Miami Gardens is all about. Mario is our new city clerk, but he is not new to the city. He started with Miami Gardens in 2008 as an administrative assistant. The city clerk at the time was Renetta Taylor. She invested greatly in Mario. He obtained his associate's degree, then he obtained his bachelor's degree, and then he got his certification as a municipal, uh, a municipal clerk. Mario would eventually become deputy city clerk in Miami Gardens, and then he would move on to what we like to call less greener pastures. He went and left to another city. No shade. Last year at this event, Ms. Taylor announced her retirement. Shortly thereafter, Mario asked, could he come home? Welcome back, Mario. Welcome home. Now, another notable addition to the city isn't a person. It's the physical manifestation of a policy. As mayor, I introduced the idea that we should send young folk from this community to the police academy, giving them an opportunity for meaningful a meaningful life and service to this community through law enforcement. The council agreed and the manager moved ahead with what, become, what would become a very, very, very new and innovative initiative. Now you would think this idea would have had universal appeal. It didn't. Well today I present to you several of the officers that we've put through the academy, young men and women, that stand ready to protect this community. Thank you all for your service, all of you. 
You run towards danger, from, you to, run towards the danger from which we flee. You stand quietly when others sit and talk. Your contributions are often thankless from the masses and, and they're either unaware of what you do or they're just unwilling to offer gratitude on their behalf, on behalf of all the residents. I thank you, I thank you and welcome to the Miami Gardens family. You all please stand up. This is the Miami Gardens model of community police. Having a force that is familiar with the community to the greatest extent possible from the community and living in the community while fostering meaningful engagement with the community. The word community is powerful here because public safety isn't simply about law enforcement. It's not about police officers patrolling a geographic area. Public safety is an intimate combination of law enforcement and residents and community-based organizations and institutions of faith and economic development. Public safety is not one thing, it's everything. And how all of those things work together to promote the values of life and liberty, the virtue of safety and all the creature comforts that safety creates. It is this understanding that led us to partner with the state attorney's office to implement ULEAD. Now, ULEAD is a program that allows petty criminal offenses by university students to be diverted away from the criminal justice system. While we understand and recognize the need for everyone to be safe, we also understand that not every petty transgression should limit your life ambitions with the record that will be forever yours. If we can keep you out of the criminal justice system, we will. On behalf of the young adults, this program will actually serve. I thank the city attorney for taking the lead in implementing, or the state attorney, and taking the lead for implementing this program. Additionally, a while ago we implemented a civil citation program and made one of the eligible offenses possession of marijuana. With the implementation of that policy, the city gave its police officers the opportunity to drive misdemeanor marijuana cases away from the criminal justice system and towards programs that would allow the offender to avoid a criminal record. And now, we know this works. One young man entered the program and with his successful completion of the program has been hired by a major car dealership. He's obtained every state and local license and is now one of the top mechanics at that dealership. The completion of the program allowed him to put things back on track. And, and he's also become an entrepreneur. He is a mobile mechanic shop. This would not have been possible without a second chance, the second chance that we gave him. Examples like this have shown us that we must go a step further. In Miami Gardens, if your only offense is possession of a misdemeanor amount of marijuana, you will not be arrested. You will be diverted to the civil citation program. Now let me be clear to some people in the very back who just got very happy. <laughs> I'm joking. They're all sitting over there. No. Uh, th this doesn't give individuals the right to impose their use of marijuana on others by smoking it in public. I'm not doing that. I if you're doing that, you're probably still going to get arrested. However, I can see no meaningful value in folks sitting in jail or just having for just having marijuana on their person. Often, they lose time off work or miss school. Families. Family lives are disrupted, and they're labeled criminals forever. Uh, additionally, our police officers, they have to fill out those reports. They have to take them down. There. They aren't on the streets patrolling. They have to go to court. To tell it's too much. This is unacceptable and not productive for those individuals, as well as being unproductive for our city. We will no longer accept it. Now, as a city, we operate with grace and discretion in some areas, in others, we will show no bend, and we will never break. We will continue to work with every agency, from every level of government, to deter, investigate, pursue, arrest, and prosecute those who would bring violence to the streets of this city. We will not yield, ever. Now, it's not just our expansive view of policy or our partnerships with other agencies with regard to law enforcement. Everything matters. As such, we continue to invest 
in the infrastructure and parks, as well as the, as well as the diverse, diversity of activities and educational opportunities for our children. Now, heading all of the development and uh, development activities on our parks is a young lady by the name of Paulette Murphy. She doesn't know that she's actually in the speech. Y'all give Paulette a round of applause if she's around. Now, Paulette has almost 26 years of experience in parks and recreation operations and development. So she started when she was actually like five years old because she's only 31. I'm joking. I don't know her age. She, she, she's amazing. She's really amazing and she's forward looking. You can see that in the new offerings that's coming to the parks. You can see that in how the parks are opening. I have faith in her. This council has faith in her. This manager has faith in her. We're going to move the parks forward. Now, with regard to the infrastructure, Bunch Park, Bunch Park Pool is now open. Y'all need to clap because y'all really hounded Councilman Harris and Williams and Airport about that pool. The, the activity center at Bunch Park is well underway. Renovations at the community center are moving forward. And Buccaneer Park will reopen towards the end of November. With their two children's trust grants that will help our youth excel, the awards total more than half a million dollars. These grants will allow us to provide after school programs and summer camp opportunities free of charge to 120 children in grades K through 5. Yeah. We'll also be able to provide activities for kids in grades 6 through 12, 50 of them free of charge. They will, uh, the grants will allow us to engage children who have an interest and demonstrated need but may lack the opportunity and resources to excel. Additionally, this year, for the first time, children in Miami Gardens will be taught snorkeling. They will also be able to learn how to scuba dive. Our plan is to offer swimming lessons and follow the progress of those children all the way through to scuba diving, giving them an experience they might not have had available to them, expanding their horizons, even if that means allowing them to explore the ocean's depth. Physical activity for our children will never be enough. Now we have STEM programming on our parks. We've partnered with the SEEK Foundation to offer free STEM activities throughout the year. Additionally, four times a year, families can come together in parks to experience STEM Saturdays. What we're doing is creating a critical mass of interest in STEM in anticipation of the new STEM building that will be built on Risco Park. Now, this one is my favorite because I got a nice chess set. Our kids will be able to learn how to play chess on our parks. Now, you often hear people say it's not checkers, it's chess. Well, that, that, that's mean to say it's not reactive, it's about strategy. That's fine because our plan is to put our children in position to capture their kings. That's what we're doing on our parks every day. Now, turning now to the city's finances, they remain strong. Our reserves are at nearly 20% of the city expenditures. Additionally, the city maintains an A-plus bond rating. And an a A-plus bond rating with Fitch, yeah, that's you. You can tell the financial services guys, they start clapping. And an A-minus a bond rating with Standard & Poor's. Now, what that means, you all, is that we have good credit. Or, or as a good friend of mine said, we don't have to put our lights in our baby's name. And we don't have to get our mama to co-sign a car. Additionally, the SEC has concluded their investigation into the Miami Gardens general obligation bond with no findings. Now, what that means is we didn't do anything wrong, which is what we always said. In 2003, we asked the residents for $60 million to put science, technology, engineering, mathematics, recording studios, television production area, culinary arts, activity center, and a senior center on our parks, and that is what we're doing. We asked the residents for the money to invest in technology as a means of supplementing the presence of law enforcement, and that is what we're doing, and that's what we're going to continue to do. While some may criticize our undertaking in an effort to be the dark cloud on an otherwise sunny day, we're going to shine through. If they're the night, we're going to be the stars. This city will continue to rise with the help of the faithful and in spite of every hater. I promise. No place is this better demonstrated than with all the development that's going on in the city. Now, 
I've been on the city council just long enough to remember a time when a, 40, a former city council man, uh, former city manager, and I think the couple of you are going to remember this. He said, uh, he said that you couldn't expect people to build anything in Miami Gardens but gas stations and corner stores. He said that. It was said that our expectations needed to be limited because they couldn't see why people would build here. Others accepted these harbingers of a pedestrian thinking. We did not. I did not. I didn't accept it then and I don't accept it now. And to the notion that we could achieve no greater, I say, what were acres of empty land is now being developed into over two million square feet of office and industrial space, creating hundreds of jobs that will be available to Miami Gardens residents first, so don't tell me what you can't see. What, what was a flea market is now the Gardens promenade, promenade, shout out to Yoram who's out there, with national retailers that people said would never come here, so don't tell me what you can't imagine. What, what was planned to be a truck stop is now a premier destination for entertainment called Top Golf. so don't tell us what we shouldn't expect. What was a parking lot is going to be the new home of the Miami Tennis Open, so don't tell us what type of people will never come to our community. Look, the, the city that could only host a football game is now becoming a home to the training facility of the Miami Dolphins and the headquarters for their football and business operations, so don't tell us what's impossible. Many believe having vision is seeing what's in front of them. But I understand vision to be the ability to see what isn't there and build. The ability to imagine what could never be and create. Now in the coming weeks, the city manager and I will submit a purchase agreement to the city council in an effort to develop 38 acres just north of City Hall. The development will include a massive entertainment venue an innovative restaurant concept, and multiple restaurant venues, an extraordinary public place area, and a hotel. And we're just getting started. Now, it may be helpful to understand how I see space. I see space and development with the plurality of possibilities, unchanged from singular expectations, functional, and not necessarily predictable, forward-looking, and flexible to the greatest extent possible. That's what we're trying to encourage. That's the development we want. With that said, this development will be designed by one of the best architects in the world with regard to sustainability, Colby Carp. I think some of the team is here. You all give them a round of applause. This development is going to reflect the greatness of this community who we were, laborers in every field and in every way, who we are, professionals, white collar, blue collar, young, middle aged, old, er, older, <laughs> old, er, <laughs> and, and who we will be, an extraordinary place with exceptional people creating our future together. Now, something that will assist with all the development all over the city is better light. Towards that end, the city will begin a massive education campaign regarding the special lighting districts. Special lighting districts are the entities that are currently controlled by the county, but control all the street lights throughout the city. Though it may have gone unnoticed to some, the city is unusually dark at night. Making the city brighter is a public safety issue. Making the city brighter is an economic development issue. We have to turn on the lights in the city. Beginning November 21st, ballots will be mailed to Miami Gardens voters. The sole issue on the ballot will be whether the city should take over the special lighting districts. When voters receive their ballot, they, 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 there's only going to be one issue there. All they have to do is fill out the ballot and drop it in the mailbox. Postage is already included. The ballots will be tallied on December 11th. Voters will have a choice. The choice between living in the dark or saying collectively, let there be light. Through our action, by your will, we will become something brighter, something brighter than we were before. Now, we have to become brighter not just through the illumination of streetlights, but also through the exercise of our civic obligations. Fifteen years ago, when this city was created, it wasn't just about city services. 
It wasn't just about streets or parks or police or economic development. It wasn't about, it wasn't about just that stuff or budgets. It was about us letting our light shine. It was about different neighborhoods consolidating their voice and projecting a value. This is not a function of brick and mortar. It's an achievement born from aspiration, inspiration, education, and hope. This aspiration that says um, the American dream is alive and it's alive in you. The inspiration that, that demands that sacrifices and hardships endured by prior generations are not to be wasted with a contemporaneous capitulation to a status quo. An education that details what's been accomplished, thus foreshadowing what can be accomplished. A hope that says, yes, we can be transformative. Yes, we can speak with one voice. Yes, we can be active participants in the representative republic that has in so many ways changed the world. Towards this end, the city has created the Office of Civic Engagement. As a function of city government in Miami Gardens, we will register voters year round. We will educate residents with, with regard to civics continually. We will work to become the most civically active city in the country. And with this, it's my hope that we will transform our body politic into a marketplace of ideas that helps us collectively realize the fullness of the American experiment. In this way, we become more than a city of 113,000 souls. We become the voice that reflects the values of a people that will lead forward our American path. Now, we have to speak with one voice. An area where this is gonna be really, really, really important is with regard to our water providers. Now, I don't wanna single anybody out, but the city of North Miami Beach is the water provider for approximately 11,708 folios in the city of Miami Gardens. These are households with senior citizens, young children, people who go to work every day and struggle to make ends meet every day. These are businesses as small as the new restaurant startup and as large as Hard Rock Stadium. They're institutions of faith and city parks. Every one of those entities, every interest, every activity, every church, every working family, every small business, every large business that has North Miami Beach as their water provider pays an additional 25% surcharge because they are not within the city limits of North Miami Beach. Now, North Miami Beach is able to do this because of a state statute that was passed that allowed a city that was providing water outside of their city boundaries to charge water recipients outside of their city boundaries an additional 25%. The thinking behind the statute was that if a city had to take the water from their city to people and businesses outside their city, there would be additional expense. Because there would be additional expense, there should be an additional cost. Now, the problem with that with regard to the city of Miami Gardens, homes and businesses, is we don't receive water from the city of North Miami Beach. The water that we receive comes from an aquifer that's right under the city of Miami Gardens. The water is processed in a water plant that is located in the city of Miami Gardens. The city of North Miami Beach is charging households and businesses in this city a 25% surcharge for their own water. This bastardization of state law will not stand. And if it is to stand, it cannot stand while we sit. When this statute was written, we were not a city. When this surcharge began, we were not a community. We were houses and people and blocks and stores and businesses and churches. But now we are one, united in name and purpose. As a city, we will sue North Miami Beach. So our residents, maybe they can't do it on their own. Maybe the businesses can't do it on their own. Well, we're a city, we exist forever. We're gonna sue them and we will fight. And if this is going to be imposed, it will have to be from a court. It won't be from a city council. And we should all be clear. We are Miami Gardens.
Members of the council, residents, Mr. Manager, Madam City Attorney, Mr. Clerk, with one voice and a common path, the state of our city is strong. Born from the hopes of those that were and baptized by the efforts of those that are, the state of this city is strong. From the geographical limitations to a never ending and ever expanding communal horizon of possibility, from Bunch Park, where my parents grew up, to the Bajas, where I'm raising my son, the state of this city is strong and it's getting stronger. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless the country. God bless the city.